Welcome to this Android tutorial. This uh, tutorial is intended for software developers who have no time to lose and want to develop applications in the Android mobile environment. It will assume that you have some kind of experience with the, the Java programming language. How is it organized? Well, it's uh, very pragmatic. We'll start coding uh, very, very soon. And I will just introduce the different Android concepts when we need them. So let's start. So we are here to learn how to develop with Android. So I'll be uh, kind of brief on the Android introduction. Let me say just that Google has announced uh, the Open Inset Alliance and at the same time the availability of the Android platform in November 2007 when they released the very first Android software SDK. In the United States, uh, one year later, T-Mobile has announced the very first Android mobile phone, the G1, so it was in October, October 2008, and uh, since they have sold uh, several hundreds of thousands. So what is this uh, open handset Alliance. Of course, it's Google, but it's more than Google. There's more than uh, there's 40 plus companies involved. We have uh, handset telephone manufacturers like HTC, LG, Motorola, Samsung, but also mobile operators like China Mob Mobile, uh, Communication KDDI, Docomo, Sprint, Nextel, T-Mobile, Telecom Italia, Telefonica. Uh, also, semiconductors companies like Audience, Broadcom, Intel, NVIDIA, and others. Software companies, uh, including uh, eBay, uh, Nuance, uh, Packet Video, and uh, also commercialization companies like Aplex, uh, TAT, uh, Wind River. So what about now the Android development? What's what's different? I would say three things. First, the limited resources. A mobile phone is not a computer, even if mobile phones nowadays are very powerful. And one of the limits is the battery capacity. You have to know that every clock tick of the processor, every refresh of the memory, every backlit of a pixel on the screen, uh, will take energy from, from the battery. Not a big deal for a laptop, but you have to consider that on a, on a mobile phone. So battery size is limited and uh, as a developer you need to take that into account. So basically the computed resource resources are limited and uh, the clock rates are only in the hundreds of megahertz which is going to impact the way you are developing. The second point, uh, mashups uh, or reusability if you prefer. In other mobile environments, applications are separate. Uh, maybe the web browser is an exception, but you are expected to code what your application is doing. Here on this platform it, it's really different and one of the Maybe a uh, greatest example is Google Map that you can very, very easily integrate in your application. We're going to learn how to do that. And the third uh, point is uh, would be the uh, interchangeable applications. Uh, for example, if you want to send an email, you do not directly connect to uh, the email program of the phone because there may be uh, five, ten email programs. You just ask the operating system uh, for a piece of software that is able to send an email. So these are for the main uh, differences. And that's it for this brief Android introduction. In this chapter we're going to prepare our Android development environment. We're going to do a little bit of downloading, of installing and of configuring, but when we'll be done, we'll have everything we need to start coding. We'll be able to start developing thanks to the editor and the compiler. We'll have access to the technical documentation. We'll also be able to test our application, and if you don't have any Android phone, not a problem. 
we'll use the emulator. We'll also have access to a debugging environment and to performance tools. You'll also be able to sign your application in order to distribute it. For most developers, what's different when developing with Android is the fact that the environment you're using to develop is different than the environment you're using to run your application. If you are a GNU Linux, a Mac or a Windows developer, usually the environment you're using to develop is the same used or very close to the one used to run your application. Here, of course, it's different. You probably don't want to code directly on your telephone. The keyboard and the screen of your computer will be much more comfortable. Until you are really free of bug, we will develop and test on the emulator. And then, when you'll be really ready, you'll test on your telephone. And if possible, if you want to do a proper QA, you will test on different models of Android phones to make sure the application behavior doesn't change. Now, what are we going to need to start developing? In most cases, developers use an integrated development environment, and usually Eclipse. That's what we are going to use here, and that's what I recommend. Eclipse is not the Android development environment. Eclipse is a development environment, but, but thanks to plugins and tools, at any time we'll have access to all the tools we need. But once again, what will we need? We need Java. Combined with XML, Java is the Android development language. Then we'll need Eclipse. We'll need the Android SDK, Software Development Kit. And we'll need ADT, the plugin I was mentioning a couple of seconds ago. Here we go. We're going to start with the Java development environment. And I'm talking about the Java development environment. Not only the GRE, the runtime environment, we need the GDK development environment. You can go directly to send.java.com, then you click on downloads, then on top downloads, and you will see different version. You will probably want to download the Java SE here in version 6, but if you are an expert Java developer, you may also download the Enterprise version. Now we command for Mac developers. You don't need to listen to what's following because Java is already there, installed on your computer. For the GNU Linux users, you will probably want to choose the Linux self-extract file. And for Windows users, I will recommend the Windows offline installation multi-language. Now that Java is installed, we are going to take care of Eclipse w3.eclipse.org We will click on Downloads and you'll see multiple versions. As I said earlier, Eclipse is a multi-purpose developing environment. You can use it for C, for C++, Ruby, PHP, actually whatever you want. Here you can choose the Eclipse ID for Java developers or the Enterprise Edition. The version we're going to use is version 3.5, which code name is Galileo. And now it's Android's turn. We're going to need to download the SDK. We can go to developer.android.com. In the download category, you will see a Windows, Mac, and Linux version. Make sure you know exactly where you extract the SDK and you'll see a tools directory. You need to add this directory to the path of your system. For Linux, it's quite simple. You're going to go to the, your home directory and you'll see a dot bash underscore profile or dot bash rc. You'll see your path environment variable. You will add semicolon and the complete path for tools. On macOS, it's about the same thing. 
but it's a .rc file that you're going to edit. If it doesn't exist, you can create it. Now for Windows users, it's a little bit more tricky, but I'm going to give you the recipe. Right click on my computer, then you click on properties, and then on advanced tab, and then on environment variable, you will see a dialog box. Double click on path, and then here you will have the complete path for the tools directory. Once again, right click on my computer, select properties, then advanced tab, then environment variable, double click on path, and then you have the complete path for the tools directory right in there. If everything is okay, and as I will show you right here, wherever you are on your file system, you should be able to execute the Android tools. And let's try with one of them, ADB. And this is the result you should get. This being done, we're now going to take care of ADT. ADT, Android Developer Tools, is this uh, plugin that will allow us to develop Android applications using Eclipse. That's going to be our last step. So I'm starting Eclipse. And we're going in Help, Install New Software. And here you can see that there are already a number of uh, downloading sites. I'm going to add a new one. I will name it android.adt. For the URL, it's going to be https semicolon slash slash dl dash ssl dot google dot com slash android slash eclipse. So we can just confirm here. And uh, so we want the Android development tools. Next. And I will probably have to validate the installation. Confirm that I accept that the packages have not been signed. And the installation is now done. I will now restart Eclipse, which is being done. And now we can make sure that under Windows, you have now the Android SDK and the AVD Manager. Now, Eclipse and ADT are installed. They communicate with each other. But, but this being said, the SDK of Android and Eclipse are ignoring themselves because we have not indicated Eclipse where to find the SDK. So we'll just go to the preferences and then click on Android and uh, make sure to fill in the SDK location. You see where it is on my Mac, on your computer it may be different. Once it's done, you can go back in the Android SDK manager. AVD means Android Virtual Device. And here you can see that on my machine I already have a virtual device configured. Android to the one API 11.7. It's probably not the case on the computer, so we're going to download the different versions of the APIs and configure a device. For that, you will go to available packages, and then you'll be able to download the different version. I would recommend that you download all of them, even if it uh, can be a little bit long to download. But it's the only way to test your application on the different version of uh, the API, so on different version of, of an Android phone. 
But of course, if you're developing for one phone and only one phone, then just download the one you need, it's fine. Once it's done, you can go install packaged and it can take a couple of minutes to download all that stuff. You will have the Android documentation, API 7 in this case, the Android SDK 2 version 4, API, uh, Android APIs and the Google APIs as well. We now have everything we need uh, to create a device, to create a virtual device. First, I will remove the one I have on my computer, which is done. And I will recreate it to show you the process. New, so the name. Uh, I create usually more than one device, so I like to have a meaningful uh, name, and I usually include the Android version and the API level version. Here, level 7. For the target, so 2.1. And uh, now we can specify size for the SD card. That's for the emulator, of course. I will use here 128 meg. You can uh, also select a couple of gigs if you want, but you need to know that your emulator will, touch, will take much, much, much longer to start. Uh, 128 is usually good. Nothing else to change. The screen is good. And now we can create this device. And uh, usually it's something that can take a while and even freeze your computer for a couple of minutes, but usually it comes back up. Uh, click on OK. And now I can close this virtual device manager. Now we have installed everything we need to start developing this Android. But remember, it's one thing to have a tool, it's another thing to know how to use it. So in the next chapter, we're going to see how to use this Eclipse environment efficiently. And then, but only then, we'll start really developing application and we'll have a look on uh, what's under the hood.